So Tocqueville says, the way to mitigate the dangers or the problems of individualism is to see your private and individual good as connected to the public good. And this is exactly how the three main characters and only murders in the building start from selfish, self-absorbed characters who are really doing this for the Instagram likes right. to actually caring about the common good. With me today, I have Dr. Joseph Griffith. He is a assistant professor of politics at the King's College in New York City. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some politics and literature themes, uh, and we're going to discuss some of some articles that you've written uh, in the last year or so. And I will first want to start with, you have an article on Tocqueville and only murders in the building. What, what made you realize that connection and why did you want to draw upon those themes? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Brent. Well, uh, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, my wife and I were watching Only Murders in the Building, you know, on our couch after we put the kids to bed one night. And uh, it was especially the opening credits to uh, the first season, which is what my article is about, which, by the way, if you haven't seen it, it's fantastic. Uh, it stars Steve Martin and Martin Short and Selena Gomez. It's about three people in this lavish, upscale apartment complex in the Upper West Side who, who bond over their love of true crime podcasts and investigates what seems to be or maybe is not a murder that happens in their building. But uh, I, I stumbled upon this, this connection as I was watching the opening credits. Uh, the, the, the opening credits, it's, it's animated and it draws, it, the camera draws up and you see the um, lit uh, windows of these various apartment of apartments uh, in this complex and it reminded me a lot of the opening credits to Alfred Hitchcock's masterpiece, Rear Window. Okay. So Roger Ebert, Ebert famously said that watching Rear Window is like watching someone else watch their neighbors. You're spying on someone who's spying on their neighbors. Uh, and a professor of mine uh, noted that this is a commentary on the disconnectedness of liberalism and the extent to which increasingly democratic art forms for Hitchcock uh, film that you would see in a movie theater and for Only Murders in the Building, a streaming show on Netflix that you watch alone, the extent to which these democratic art forms facilitate friendship or increasingly draw us into our own, our own little bubbles. So uh, in the opening credits of Rear Window, uh, you see a bunch of people across, across the courtyard uh, in their very, very intimate details of their life, uh, getting dressed in the morning, uh, uh, arguing with one's spouse, uh, and yet, and so this is supposed to simulate the camera uh, that is filming people's lives at a distance, but then it's also, a, so then it's a commentary on what we are doing as viewers of the movie, watching people's lives as very intimate details, but yet at a distance. So there's been a, a numerous studies in recent years about the disconnectedness of modern life the intense emptiness and loneliness of modern life. And I think these, these uh, the show and the film speak to this. That's neat. And, and so Tocqueville talks a lot about individualism and he talks about how people are growing apart. How does that theme, um, how do you think that theme has changed from the way that he saw it and what, he, what, what was he observing? And then obviously how does it apply now to uh, the, the world that you're describing in, in Only Murders in the Building? Yeah, great question. Individualism is one of the key themes in Tocqueville's writing. It's basically a disposition to reflective isolation. We as uh, Americans, uh, citizens of a democratic regime where the people rule, we think that we are being virtuous when we leave the public and withdraw to our own private spaces. And Tocqueville talks about the difference between democratic regimes and aristocratic regimes. In an aristocratic regime, you have a uh, community built in, whether it's the, the relationship between the peasants and the aristocrats, or uh, amongst the family, in the family. Uh, so you have a very tangible relationship with your father, his father. And right. the lands, you know, Alexis de Tocqueville, of Tocqueville, yes, yeah, I'm yeah. from yep. here. And democracy uh, cuts those ties and, and sets sure. us on our way, and, and so we're isolated. And one of the things that he says is that when you're at this sort of period of equality, you're it sort of has an unintended consequence that you drift into tribalism or drift into majority opinion. Just sort of is the way that things are because if we're e if you and I are equal, then who who am I to say that my opinion is better than yours because we're all equal and the law? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Everyone has one unit of intelligence. Yes, and so uh, you just and because you you don't have any. Uh, 
you don't have any pre-existing connections with anyone. Yes. You form those connections based on superficial and tribalistic ties. So you sort of withdraw into your own bubble and talk to only people who think like you, look like you, uh, etc. And so I think that that problem has been exacerbated uh, immensely. Um, Robert Putnam in the early 2000s writes about this. He says that more people are paradoxically bowling, but fewer people are bowling in leagues. Okay. People are bowling, yep. but alone. Okay. That's interesting. I would never go bowling alone. <laughs> <laughs> people but people, people go bowling alone. Okay. Uh, the secondary institutions uh, that have given people, have helped people find meaning, uh, such as especially the church, sure. but also civic organizations, um, they've declined. Yeah. And um, I mean, really, uh, especially adult men um, have few friends. Sure. SNL had a hilarious skit about this. Have you seen the one about the man park? Where yes. The, <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, you go to the, the man yeah. park to... Uh, make a friend as you would take a dog to the dog park to make a friend. Yeah, and you're talking about civic and, and religious institutions. I think um, I think that also speaks not just to how people and men in particular are struggling for, for meaning, but also that they're uh, the individualist nature, to go back to what you're talking about with Tocqueville, Yuval Levine, uh, an our contributor and, and prolific writer, he had a book, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's called A Time to Build that came mm -hmm. out recently. Mm -hmm. And his big premise is that we have shifted, in the, even though, especially in the last couple decades, but I mean, really over the last hundred years, we've shifted from viewing institutions as uh, formative in that it, they shape who we are and what we're intended to do to viewing it as platforms to sort of launch our own careers and to, to right. launch our own in, in personal brand is a phrase that gets thrown yes, a lot. Yes, exactly. Uh, and I think that's it's really interesting how I think that probably, the, I mean, I'm sort of speculating here, but I think the, the two issues are very very connected that the meaning and the purpose um, have a lot to play, a lot to do with how we view ourselves and the interest that we take in institutions like that. So what has filled our, what has typically provided human beings with meaning, um, and I think this is especially where Rear Window and Only Murders in the Building are, is so perceptive, um, to a large degree it's social media. Yeah. Social media promises community. Yes. But at a distance. Yes. Uh, it, it encourages detached looking and browsing at the very yes. intimate details of other people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I think Hitchcock, at least to some extent, predicts this when um, Jimmy Stewart's character, uh, Jeffries, uh, in Rear Window, is gazing through this camera lens out over the courtyard at his neighbor's apartments. And he yeah. nicknames, nicknames them... Um, uh, uh, the sexy dancer, I think, okay. is one of them. The the uh, Miss Lonely Hearts, who eventually yeah. considers suicide. So he reduces like complex human beings to their most obvious characteristic and nicknames them. Yeah. And this allows him weirdly to know a lot about them. Yeah. But not to care about them. Yeah. In the same, in a similar way, Only Murders in the Building, uh, the first season, spends a lot of time talking about why anyone should care that this young man either committed suicide sure. or was murdered. Um, and it's when the characters think of themselves as in his shoes, that they stop just sleuthing around and trying to think of this as a case, but think of this as a real human being, is when they come to care about him. So Tocqueville says, the way to mitigate the dangers or the problems of individualism is to see your, is, he calls it enlightened self-interest, to see your private and individual good as connected to the public good. Yeah. And it is, and this is exactly how the three main characters and only murders in the building start from selfish, self-absorbed characters who are really doing this for the Instagram likes. Right. To actually caring about the common good. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's really powerful. I think I think speaking to social media is like this, social media is really, especially in the last couple of years with the pandemic. I think that this really, really ramped up quite a bit. So, um, if you have any interest in checking out uh, Dr. Griffith's article on this, you can find that in the description below. And if you want to watch more about the the nature of social media and why social media, particularly TikTok, should be banned, click here to check out this video.